And so one part of what Pi's lab is about is transforming the practice of law and developing models for how people should, should practice that bring mutual recognition, empathy, compassion, and love to the center of, of what law practice is about. Um, a second aspect is supporting the restorative justice movement in criminal law. That is supporting an approach to uh, to primarily to criminal law, but really to all conflict. That emphasizes the importance of apology, forgiveness, being able to take responsibility for what you've done and know that you're going to be seen by the other in a way that have that that reflects compassion for for wrongdoing and also for the victims who have suffered from from crime or other forms of social injustice. In other words, the, the, one of the key things about the restorative justice movement is that uh, having a legal problem in the present system that we're in often leaves the, the person with the problem outside of a process that takes place outside of them that does not dignify their suffering, doesn't recognize what they've gone through, and doesn't seek to heal the harm that they're trying to speak for. And so the restorative justice movement's attempt to speak for the suffering of victims at the same time as reflecting uh, on the on compassion toward the wrongdoer uh, is the centerpiece of what we're doing. So the, the four key elements of the project for integrating spirituality, law, and politics are transforming individual practices, supporting restorative justice and criminal law, supporting transformative mediation, or understanding-based mediation, mediation that emphasizes honoring conflict as an opportunity for the transformation of human beings, not just as a way of uh, working out disputes in a conventional way that's nicer than the ruthlessness of litigation. It, mediation needs to be a, a more profound encounter than that in order to realize its full potential, so we support the more transformative vision of what mediation can be as opposed to adversarial litigation. And finally, transforming legal education. Uh, that's m my main interest because I'm a law teacher. But it's also incredibly important because uh, legal education is this massive social indoctrination process that currently takes place. In every major city there are institutions, law schools, where new generations of recruits come every year, in their, many of them in their early 20s, and learn, that's how the, the profession is, is passed on intergenerationally. And so, just as uh, Andrew Weil and others are making an attempt to transform medical education so that uh, a, a, a deeper spiritual awareness is brought into healing the body than the traditional, highly scientized approach to medicine, that Western medicine that we've inherited, the same thing needs to happen in legal education. So that um, students develop a more supple and empathic way of thinking about cases and of social conflict in general, and think about it in the broader terms that uh, I've outlined already and talked to. I think for, for us to be successful, the same values that we want to see in uh, the world of lawyers, in humanizing legal education, in making lawyers more empathic and compassionate, in making law school more humane. Those psycho-spiritual values that are so important to us, we also have to bring into the world. And that means incorporating into our movement challenges to legal doctrine, to bring the values of empathy, compassion, and mutual understanding, make it, bring it into the doctrine itself, so that, um, uh, so that, for example, Rhonda McGee's work on the meaning of equality in the 14th Amendment needs to incorporate, as she points out, a conception of human dignity and mutual affirmation and overcoming the distortions in human relationships that lead people to become unequal. It's central to bring that into the doctrine where the world is, uh, as well as bringing it into our own settings of the law office and legal education and our relations with other lawyers and other, uh, other people that we encounter in legal settings. 
one of my concerns about the collaborative law movement, the therapeutic jurisprudence movement, these, these incredibly important, excellent movements that I identify with, is that they could become self-referential, in which it, it creating a world in which lawyers are kinder and gentler to each other, but in which the world is left untouched by these uh, these values, and that the world is embodied in the legal doctrines themselves, in what constitutes legal rules, and in the values embedded in them. The Project for Integrating Spirituality, Law, and Politics, people can go to the website spiritlawpolitics.org, www.spiritlawpolitics.org, and uh, those of us who are participants in that group, many of us, most of us are on that website. Some of our writings are on there. Uh, and we're, we're just now updating it to the present day of 2008.